right, a very good evening to you and welcome to Breaking Today. My name is Frederick Muitiriri. My sign language interpreter tonight is Teresia Washira. And Clifford Dumbi is standing by to be bringing you business news later in the bulletin. But first, the highlights. Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwila appoints five judge bench to hear cases of dissolution of parliament. DPP okays murder charge against Malindi MP Aisha Jumwa and a dormitory in Musingu Boys High School in Ikolomani, Kakameka County has been destroyed by fire barely two days after schools resumed. All right, welcome to the broadcast. You can talk to me via our SMS line. That is 341-344-311. Talk to me via... Triple one, triple four, triple one. We are live on Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube as Switch TV Kenya. Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilu has appointed a five judge bench to hear cases on dissolution of parliament following the Chief Justice David Maraga's advisory to President Uru Kenyatta to dissolve the parliament. The five judges will be led by Justice Lydia Chode, Justices George Odunga, James Macau, Anthony Ndongo, and Pauline Nyamwea. This comes after High Court Judge Weldon Correll had directed that the file be preferred to the Chief Justice to appoint judges who will hear and determine the case. Maraga, on September 21, 2020, wrote to President Uru Kenyatta advising him to dissolve Parliament over its inability to pass the two-third gender rule. CJ Maraga, in the unprecedented move, said Parliament had refused to comply with the High Court order to enact legislation required to implement the two-thirds gender rule for over nine years. I'm present, my lords and my ladies. Certainly. Now to other matters. The Office of the Director of Public Prosecution has okayed a murder charge against Malindi MP Aisha Juma over the killing of a man during last year's Gunda Ward by-elections. The man was shot in the shoulder and killed during the chaos and several other people, including police officers, were injured. Lincoln Wambugu with the story. Gumbao Dola, who was 48 years old, died upon arrival at Malindi General Hospital. He was Katana's uncle. Chaos erupted soon after the Member of Parliament arrived at the meeting in a convoy of three vehicles, forcing police officers to shoot in the air several times. Na mimi kwa upande wa kisiasa, so long as wanaifanya hii kesi, ama hizi kesi zote ambazo wanalisukumia ni za kisiasa, I'm also a politician. Yes. We are in the same field. Yes. Tutapigana kisiasa mpaka mwisho tuone nani atasarenda. Jumo had accused Katana of campaigning long after the campaign window period had been closed. The lawmaker had stormed a meeting organized by Ruben Katana, an ODM candidate in the by-election, where he was hosting more than 500 people at his home. Yale ambao najua yanifuata saa hii. Next, mimi I'll be charged with murder. Very soon. Like two weeks to come, mimi mutanikuta hapa tena. Kwa sababu tayari wamesha pika, wamesha fanya kila kitu, na asa wanileta hapa, wanandichaji mimi na murder. The murder charges come a few months after Jumua was freed on 5 million shillings bond after pleading not guilty to six counts of money laundering, acquiring proceeds of a crime, conflict of interest, as well as fraud, while the member of parliament alongside six other people and a company were accused of defrauding the Malindi CDF of 19 million shillings. Conspiracy ni ya shilingi milioni 19 tumeelezea mahakama ukweli kwamba hili dhana ya kwamba kuna milioni 57 ni story ambazo zilikuwa zimewekwa ili mheshimiwa anyimwe cashbell ama ile cashbell yake yende juu Aisha Jumwa, who is Deputy President William Ruto's supporter and his key point person in the coast region, says that she will fight those fighting her to settle their political scores fair and square. For Switch TV News, I'm Lincoln Wumbogo. Now, a dormitory at Musingo Boys High School in Ikolomani, Kakamega County, has been destroyed by fire barely two days after schools resumed. The dormitory, which houses over 500 students, caught fire at around midday today when the learners were in class. Meanwhile, some parents, due to fear of lack of school fees, have not taken their children back to school even after the Ministry of Education directed partial reopening of schools after COVID-19 pandemic. Some schools have not reopened despite meeting all the ministry guidelines. Nyakunde Kelvin with the story. 
Tumor. The dormitory is named after Kakamega Governor Weekly for Paranya, who is a former alumnus of the school. The school is, however, synonymous with fires, considering this is the third time a fire is being reported in under a year. There were a total of 266 students who reported to the school yesterday for learning. Those are form force. So they were in class, nobody was injured, and the property destroyed over an amount of money. The police officers moved the scene and has commenced in the investigation. The cause has been established as an electric fault. Western Regional Police Boss Parish Kimani has reiterated that no fatalities were reported during the fire. We, we are encouraging the parents of Teto Technical and Vocational College to send their students back to school in spite and stop fearing about uh, the issue of school fees. We know that uh, their businesses went down because of the corona epidemic and we are encouraging them that uh, if they come back, we shall receive the students. Meanwhile, in some schools, parents are still reluctant to release their children back to school due to lack of school fees despite education. See as Professor George Magoha directing heads of schools not to send students home for lack of school fees. For this school, it was easy for us because uh, most of the parents have been having a hard time. Some of them maybe they were stopped from wherever they were working. So the mapata ilikuwa kidogo. But uh, for this school there was an arrangement because uh, we have been allowed to come with whatever we had for our kids to come back to school. The school chiefs are now calling on parents and guardians to take learners back to school, reporting that no one will be sent home to collect school fees. Nyakundi Kelvin, Switch TV. Now to matters politics, where Mandeleo chapter party leader and presidential aspirant Dr. Alfred Mutua has called on the people of Mount Kenya region to remain united ahead of the general elections. Mutua has said that the region has witnessed incidents of political activities that could fan animosity and divide the community. Mutua, who spoke in Nyeri town where he held his presidential interaction with the public dubbed, dubbed Mutua Fresh People Listening to us, has said that there are political leaders who are taking advantage of the fact that President Huru Kenyatta is serving his final term to divide the central region for selfish political reasons. In the last one week, the Machakas governor has conducted forums in Meru, Isiolo and Embu counties. Nyinyi ndiyo mashujaa ambao mulipigania uhuru na wengine. Munapaso kuwa mkiungana pamoja mkiwa na viongozi wenyu, munashikana mkono, sio kutenganwa ama kutenganishwa na viongozi wengine ambao hata wajatoka katika eneo lenu. Munajimaliza nyinyi wenyewe and the rest of Kenya tunawaangalia tu, tunawachekelea kwa. Now, today, the 14th of October, marks the 9th Kenya Defense Forces Day, a day set aside to commemorate the gallant work of the Kenyan soldiers. This year, celebrations were held at Mariakani Garrison in Mombasa County, and the theme was enhancing peace and security through military civil cooperations, as David Kagina is reporting. Every 14th of October for the past nine years has marked the commemoration and celebration of the acts of valor and gallantry by the Kenya Defense Forces, KDF. This special day has been celebrated since October of 2012 following the launch of Operation Linda Inchi in the same year. Military preciseness was witnessed at its best and it was an opportunity to honor those who lost their lives in defending and protecting the Republic of Kenya from intruders like Al-Shabaab for stability of the national security. In remembering our heroes and heroines, we today also wrap our arms around every family that has lost a loved one in the course of duty. According to the Defense Cabinet Secretary Monica Juma, often in vigorous training before engaging the enemy in combat, the soldiers have selflessly served the country. The CS noted that their work is impeccable. We can attest to the restoration of governance and a growing capacity in Somalia. Most significantly, the blatant attacks on our territory from across the border have reduced remarkably, enabling our populations to engage in productive lives. KDF troops continue to fight against terror groups, both within and beyond our borders. In particular, 
We have significantly, significantly degraded the Al-Shabaab organization, and we remain ready to robustly continue with operations who are the protection of our sovereignty and territorial integrity. The ability to operate in a difficult environment away from their loved ones is a testimony of their unwavering love for the nation, even as the CS encourage the soldiers to continue caring for regional and global peace and stability. David Kagina, Switch TV. You know, long ago you'd hear, Red, hey, hey, and they'll go like that. And they're telling you, they're just about to go on a break. Stand at ease. We'll be back with more. Talk to us on Triple One, Triple Four, and Triple One. We'll be back with more details and more stories in a short while. All right, um, welcome back. I'm receiving some of your SMSs. Once a soldier, always a soldier. Hello, Mwitiriri. You are always great at what you do. I salute you. Nancy from Comorock. Thank you. You have switched for good. Appreciated. Estella Murugi watching from Embu. It's so bad that the students will have to go back to their school to be renovated. It's also, uh, it's also good. Okay, that is not finished. All right. Somebody was asking me earlier on what, what I said just before I went on break. That is parade, parade in. We are calling the parade to attention. Moving on. A multi-billion investment project at Kwa Kazengo area in Kilifi County is in limbo after its construction was stopped by the National Environmental Management Authority, NEMA, for allegedly encroaching on wetland. The two billion shillings project has secured all the approvals from the government bodies, including NEMA, but NEMA board on Tuesday took a U-turn on its earlier decision and suspended the project indefinitely. Wellington Ojuang reports. A spot check at the construction site and it's evident construction is at top gear for this multi-billion go down, which according to NEMA board chairman John Conchella, the physical assessment had indicated that a section of it under construction had encroached 30 meters into the repair and reserve. Construction works at the site stops immediately. Environmental restoration order be issued to the developer to restore the back field section of the wetland to its original state within a period of 30 days from the date of the order. Engineer Zephania Ouma, who is the acting director of compliance and enforcement at NEMA, while clarifying why they were stopping the project they had earlier approved, had this to say. The conditional license given was very, very key and pointed out what should be done and that is what the investor has contravened. However, the management of the project protested the move to halt construction that was 80% complete. 80% of the project is completed. Today, surprising, like someone writes on a Facebook, one of the bloggers come and write something. You see a team coming and halt a work, which is not right because this is a livelihood of more than 1,000 people will be employed here. George Ongan, the human resource manager of the project, says that the company had taken all the precautionary measures to ensure they safeguarded the wetlands. It's unfortunate that after being guided properly by the authorities, and of course doing the right thing, then at the end of the day, you know, you are getting a stop order after some complaint, which was actually not based on facts. This is the second multi-billion project in Kilifi to have been suspended by NEMA within a span of a year for encroaching wetlands after the agency declined to the environmental assessment. Wellington, Ojuang, Switch TV. Thank you, Wellington. The government is rehabilitating and upgrading a 9.6-kilometer road in various areas in Kasarani sub-county to improve standards in a bid to provide the area residents with good access of roads. Daniel Karioki with the details. The roads include the rehabilitation of the three kilometer Kasarani Mwiki Road, the Sunnyside Estate Court Road that is approximately 0 0.6 kilometers at a cost of over 270 million, and upgrading the three kilometer Lucky Summer Gitomba Kasarani Mwiki Link Road at a cost of over 442 million.
The project is funded by the government and the development fund under the Kenya Urban Road Authority. And according to John Mapelli from KURA, the contractor Baraki International Limited has been encountering challenges of constructing the Lucky Samagitwamba Kasarani Mwiki Link Road due to encroachment of road corridors by individuals who have constructed permanent residential buildings. The engineer was speaking at the site when she received the Nairobi County Development Implementation Coordination Committee CDICC team led by the chair Flora Moro and the secretary of the committee Larry Mulomi from the presidential delivery unit. Mapelli says the work to be undertaken on the road will include construction of footpaths on either side of the road, drainage facilities, a river crossing bridge at Gitomba River, street lighting installations and landscaping. The Nairobi County Commissioner Moro also assured that CDICC committee will address the challenges to enable contractors progress with their works to enable them complete the projects as scheduled. Daniel Kariki for Switch TV. All right, and my director Linat is telling me it's time for business. So Clifford, take it away. Right, it's time for business. Good evening. My name is Clifford Ndubi. The country's real estate sector has recorded a slow growth in 2020 and caused unfavorable effects on back of the COVID-19 pandemic. With the economy gradually reopening, how can the industry navigate this uncertain landscape? Kennedy Kimani now has filed the following report. As the effects of COVID-19 pandemic are felt around the world, Real estate companies are being impacted in different ways, largely dependent on region and asset class. According to the director of Pacific Reality Investment, Faroson Murethi, the real estate sector has experienced shocks attributed to lockdown imposed earlier in the year and diminishing disposable income by a majority of Kenyans. Some projects were being financed by circles, uh, financed by individuals. So people were in business and we, uh, we had their project. They were financing their project. They were, able, they were not able to, uh, to finance their project. So we had also instances of project storing uh, because of finan financing. COVID-19 pandemic has brought about a huge drop in property sales. And most developers are experiencing low cash flow due to buyers holding back on their pending installments. According to site on quarter one 2020 markets review, the real estate sector recorded moderate activity with average rental yields improving marginally in the residential and commercial office sectors to 5.2% and 7.8% respectively from 5.0% and 7.5% in quarter 4 of 2019 as the retail sector registered 0.1% points drop in rental lead to 7.7% in quarter 1 of 2020 from 7.8% in quarter 4 of 2019. After Corona, um, and even uh, before Corona came, uh, people had started now moving from the comfort of rentals. So I would say the, 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 the demand for housing is very huge. Actually, the demand is very huge. Uh, banks have also started open up, opening up for customers to get financing for the, for the construction industry. So I, I would say that I'm foreseeing a big, big, big break in construction industry and real estate. The real estate industry is expected to experience a slow recovery, but many realtors remain hopeful for a post-pandemic market rebound. Kennedy Kimani, Switch TV. All right, uh, from the real estate to our farms, value addition of bananas can produce various products which can earn more money than relying on selling of bananas for ripening. As a result, Muranga farmers will now reap big after a 20 million facility was set up in the county to help in the processing. Kuwa group, pia tukuwe na kitu inaitua proper production, professional production, na proper professional marketing. Sasa pa hali kimefika, wakulima wakitua ndizi kwa shamba, wanalete hapa, tunawapimia, na mkulima tunamulipa pesa yake kwa bank. 
Elsewhere, this, the latest uh, sustainable business report shows that Safaricom contributed $654 billion to the Kenyan economy in the financial year 2019-2020. In the report, whose theme is resilience through transition, the company seeks to show that embracing the ideals of sustainable business, shaped value thinking, and the sustainable development goals is essential to cultivating the resilience uh, necessary to combat a large-scale crisis like the COVID-19 pandemic. To 2030 is well and truly on, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a round of applause as he hands that over. We have a duty to raise the awareness uh, of the sustainability challenges that we face in society and to ensure that this remain part of the discussion in Kenya uh, and regionally. The value of sustainability reporting is that it ensures organizations consider their impacts on the issues that I've just mentioned above and enables them to be transparent about the risks that uh, they face and the opportunities that they also encounter. All right, uh, to the pumps, the price of super petrol in Nairobi has increased by 0.72 per litre, while diesel has decreased by 2.18 shillings per litre in the latest price review by EPRA on Wednesday. Kerosene price uh, remains unchanged, taking effect from October 15th to November 14th, 2020. The prices are inclusive of the 8% VAT in line with the provisions of the Financial Act 2018. According to the authority, this month's prices are a consequence of the average landed cost of uh, imported super petrol increasing by 1.12 shillings per cent and diesel decreasing by 5.42 per cent. Petrol in Mombasa will retail at 104.86 shillings.